How many people believe God is good? And I, and I just, uh, I'm excited today because I, I do believe that we're on the threshold of something uh, very, very interesting where God is revealing himself and, and even in the elections and things like that, it really doesn't matter what political party you uh, represent today. We, I, I really believe we saw God move and uh, something that was impossible, he made possible. And um, that's what I believe God wants to do in this hour that we're living in. He wants to show himself. And many times that he's got to be able to show himself through you and me. And we've got to understand that we live in this natural body, but there's a spirit man that's very, very real. And that as Tom was talking there, it's easy to, to get out of that when we start to think negative or we think whatever it might be, that we slip out of something and, and that... And, I was in the prayer meeting out there today and Margaret was running a little bit late, <laughs> which, which happens regularly. <laughs> but nevertheless, I saw her going for a life to get into the prayer meeting and as she walked in there, it's like as if she walked into something. Who knows what I'm talking about? She walked into something. Is that correct? You didn't, you didn't mention it. You didn't say anything. But I could see it, and 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 she went like that, you know, and and then she and immediately she just started to pray, because you see, there's we're surrounded by a natural realm, and there's a spiritual realm. And today I want us to continue. I want to finish off what I started last week, but I have to go over a few things, understanding the spirit man. So Father, we ask you today that you would awaken to us. Open our minds, explode our minds, break through that we don't think as natural men, but we think as spiritual people. Because as we think, that's what we'll become. And Lord, we want you to invade our thinking. We want you to invade our lives that your word of God would, would develop within us. That, that, that when situations arise, we wouldn't be consumed by the negative but Lord, somehow or other, the word of God that's in us would begin to rise up and begin to declare and that we would break through and see the hand of God moving mightily in our midst. And everybody said, Amen, if you believe that. I believe that it's a time to make declarations. I believe it's time to say what God says, and that's all that really matters. See, there's an outward man, there's an inward man. The inner, inward man is re, being renewed day by day. How is this inward man being renewed day by day? By the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful. It is alive. It is living. It is working mightily in me. Just like this morning, whatever I had for breakfast is working mightily in me. <laughs> I'm actually burping. <laughs> You eat onions, it will work doubly mightily in you. But you see, what we partake of is working mightily in me. And that what I ate is what is giving me strength. If you don't eat, you die. But also, there's another member that's working in me. It's the Word of God. The Word of God is working in me. The Word of God is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So it says here in the book of Romans chapter 8, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, he's not talking about the world. He's talking about those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So it's quite obvious by that verse that as Christians, we can walk in the flesh or we can walk in the Spirit. To be... Anyhow, I'll just keep work reading what the Word of God says. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. In other words, you're saying you can't do it in the flesh. It's impossible for you to do it in the flesh. He did all this that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the f Spirit. 
it's very obvious that the writer here is trying to put something into us that we understand that there are two laws working in our lives. There are two options that are working in our lives. There's two of everything, basically this walking in our lives, working in our lives rather. And so we've got to make a choice. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And we're not talking about being some super spiritual religious freak that goes around, you know, being trying to act religious all the time. We're talking about something that will automatically come out of your life that it becomes so natural that it's spiritual. That it's, mo it's natural. It's natural to say the things, and it's not trying to pretend. I've often said that we need to sing a new uh, uh, song up here sometimes. I'm a great pretender. When pretending that oh, I'm doing fine, when in reality I'm going down the gurgler. But you see, if we live in the flesh, we set our minds on the things of the flesh. But if we live according to the Spirit, we set our minds on the things of the Spirit. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But we're not of the flesh, are we? We're spirit people. Is there anybody else out there? <laughs> For a minute I thought I was the only person in the room. Can you, have you got that applause thing up there? <laughs> you see, there's an inward man. So we can build our life in the flesh, worldly. It's very, very easy. Or you can build your life in the spirit. To be spiritually minded, not so easy. Because you see, there's a war going on. Anybody else ever had a war going on inside your thinking? Inside your mind? You see, the flesh wars against the spirit. But remember what we said the other day, the weaker must yield to the stronger. Can I hear an amen? The weaker must yield to the stronger. Works both ways. If the flesh is stronger, even in Christians here, we'll live a defeated life. And I think that's one of the problems that we face because we are being examined. The people are looking at the church. And there's many in the church that live a defeated life. But God wants us to live victorious. Is that okay to talk like that? So if, if they, even in Christians, they'll have a defeated life. That's why it's important to build your life in the Spirit. It says in Hebrews 11, chapter 6, it's, it, there's a great story of the heroes that by faith, by faith they subdued kingdoms, by faith they believed, and by faith they did this. And, it's, and it's just, if you just keep going on and on, it's all by faith. But in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, you must believe that God is... You've got to believe that God is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I hear Tom up here tonight, today, saying, come and pray. Come and pray there of a, of a morning. Come to Tuesday night. I know a lot of people pray at home. I know a lot of people pray. But I, I just tell you what, there's something about when you get together. Something about corporate prayer. There's something there that that God just somehow or other comes down. And, and, and I know that to me, that's the greatest time of a Tuesday, after, of Tuesday night there. But if we can do that, it, it's very, very important. You've got to believe that God is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I was challenged a little bit by the songs this morning. That both times, there's two songs there that says, On My Knees. I want to tell you, friends, I believe it's the time to get on our knees. It's a time to get on our face. It's not just nice little prayers. Now I not lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. It's not just uh, little things there. It's time to get on our faces and start to cry out to God. 
It's a time to, to break the strongholds and break the, the, the intimidation and, and do things. Get on our face. Cry out to God. Start believing God. Because God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Pushing through the strongholds. Pushing through. In other words, you've got to go after God. You've got to go after the things of the Spirit. We start to seek Him. You, you yield His leading. In Acts 2.25, uh, David spoke there. And, and he's, there's not actually David. They was talking about David. And they started to speak there and they said that David uh, saw the Lord before his face. In other words, David did great things for God. But it wasn't just because he was David or just a little shepherd boy. No, he was, a, he was a man or a young man that started to seek after God. He was a man there that would lift his hands and praise and worship. Would begin to worship and, and love on his God with all of his heart. And, and he could see God face to face and, and he continually kept him before him. Friend, I want to tell you when trouble comes, you've got to continually keep God in front. Amen. Or the enemy will consume you, will devour you. The enemy comes around seeking whom he may devour. He goes around like a roaring lion. He goes around wanting to consume people. But you know, I've said it many times, but Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's also going around seeking whom he may empower. And if you don't put yourself under the spout where the glory comes out, if you don't put yourself under the spout and just have some religious thing, nothing will change around your life. But if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you will find Him. If you keep Him continually before your face, if you can keep Him continually before every problem, everything that would rise up against you, if you can keep Him for, for, for... Millie, what am I trying to say? <laughs> if you can keep Him... Before you, knowing that He will look after you, that He goes with you, that He will never ever leave you nor forsake you, that He's fighting for you, amen. You keep Him continually before you. You, you continually believe what God says about a circumstance or a situation and God will see you through in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? Kept him continually before his face. Talking about building in the spirit. We're talking about building our lives. Talking about God, who God really is. Building in the spirit. I am a spirit being and I live in a natural body. I want to read again what it says in the Passion Bible in Proverbs 4 verse 20. I read this often because it means so much to me and, and I'm trying to understand it and I'm trying to work it through in my life. One of the things you and I need to understand is it's not just, just airy-fairy. You've got to get in there and you've got to push through because you see there's a war going on in your members and your flesh man will try to control you if he can. He will try to control you. He will try to stop you. He will try to do whatever he can. Listen carefully. It says here in Proverbs chapter 4, verse uh, 20. Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. You see, having a two-minute Bible reading and a little headache prayer is not really going to cut it. Fill your thoughts with my word until they penetrate into your spirit. I believe that so many times the Word of God goes straight over our head. We might even say amen to it. 
We might even give it a, an applause. We might even shout a little bit about it. But I want to tell you this, my friends, that you've got to fill your thoughts with the Word of God until it penetrates. Amen? Until it penetrates. In other words, until I'm marinated. <laughs> Takes a little while. If you, you put a piece of leather or a piece of steak into something, you marinate it. I've often said this, you can marinate boot leather, you can marinate fillet steak. They will both taste the same, just one will be a bit tougher than the other. If it's a marinate, fill my thoughts. What an amazing, how many people like that scripture? What a beautiful thing. What a, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then, as you unwrap my words, what does that mean? If you unwrap something, you find out what's on the inside. Is that correct? If I gave you a gift today or my bag here, whatever it might be, there's nothing in it at the moment. <laughs> this, oh, this one's got heaps in it. But, you know, if you don't know what's in it until you unwrap it. You don't really know what's in the Word of God until you unwrap it. It's not just little, little things on your refrigerator or somewhere else. You've got to unwrap it. And then you'll see really what it is, what, what's, in the, what's in it, what's on the inside. You see, this book contains... This book contains something. You know what it contains? It contains your freedom. It contains your healing. It contains your deliverance. It contains everything that you need. But you have to unwrap it. You've got to unwrap it. When Then, as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. Then it goes on to say, guard your heart. Guard your heart. What an amazing verse of Scripture. What an amazing thing. Fill your thoughts with my thoughts until they penetrate your heart or your spirit. So you will build your life in the, in the spirit or in the natural. Natural person cannot be spiritual. The natural person will never be spiritual. All he will ever be is religious. Religious. Faith comes from God. Hearing from God. Head knowledge. What's that? But you see, spirit knowledge is revelation. Anybody ever had a revelation? Come on, anybody ever had one? Oh, so they're popular. <laughs> Come on, give me a wave. So it's not just for a select few people. Anybody ever had a revelation? Come on. It's okay, this is not a trick question. <laughs> you see, it's, how do you get a revelation? When you unwrap it. When you, when you start to seek God, when you go after God, when you go for, go for God. Faith comes from God. Head knowledge is, is, is really just, yeah. But spirit is hearing something from God as revelation. If God says it, you can have it. God's not a man that he should lie. Every word that comes from God is impregnated by God's ability to bring it to pass. I know I'm repeating myself, but I, I, I read this more than you. I want to get it into me. You see, we are co-workers working together with God. It's not all God. God's done everything. He's given us everything that pertains to life and to godliness, 
Now you have to go in there and unwrap it. You have to seek the Lord. You've got to push through. You've got to let God be God. You've got to, you've got to let God lead you. You've got to get revelation because that is how you will get your victory. You see, you are the builder of your life. God is the architect and the engineer of everything, but you are the builder of your own life. How do I build my life? How can I build my life that I will overcome that I will be victorious, that I'll push through negative things. I want to say, I would love to be able to say that there will never ever be another negative force that would ever come against me. But they surely will come. But when they come, something on the inside of you has to push through that thing. How do I do it? By my confession. Ren, you can look at Hebrews and see what they did. You see, problems only exist to overcome. Learn God's way and cooperate with Him. God is my source. He is my strength. He is my deliverer. He is everything. But now I have to find God's ways. And because I know that in my mind, now I have to come against what my mind in the natural will try to overtake it, I've got to start believing and I've got to confess what God says about me. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. See, Jesus now lives inside me. The Holy Spirit said He would come into me. God's with me. If you read Psalm 103, you'll find the benefits of being born again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my God. Delivers me, sets me free. All that stuff. Just read it yourself. Yield to God. Yield your weaknesses in the flesh to the Lord and replace your weakness with strength to overcome. No temptation has overcome you. Why don't we have a quick look at the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. One Corinthians chapter ten. Here somewhere. If you could just about it's why don't we just read a little bit here? Is that okay to have a read of the Bible? <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. If you walk in the flesh, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Let not sexual immorality, let's not commit sexual immorality as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 fell. Let us not tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents, nor complain, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. 
Now all these things happen to them as examples, and they are written for our admonition or our instruction, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. And it says in verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it or you may be able to endure. And it goes on to say what you should flee. I, I believe that the Word of God is truth. You believe that today. In Romans 4, 17, it says, God calls those things that be not as though they were. We've got to be able to come, and even though I may not be experiencing something, I've got to start pushing out, and I've got to start speaking what God says until it penetrates deep inside me, and it becomes part of me. Whatever you build in the Spirit, you can have in the natural. Learn the ways of God. Learn the difference between the devil's voice, God's voice, and your voice. If ever there's a day, an hour that you and I live in, we need to live in this hour, knowing the difference between the devil's voice, God's voice, and my voice. If, I, if I'm real honest, I really, really, really did not believe, and I thought I knew... <laughs> And if you've been in this church a little while, I was preparing us <laughs> because I did not believe that we could, that the liberals could win this election. Obviously, other people had the same opinion. I heard that many of Scott Morrison's staff have already got other jobs because they were not expecting to come to work on Monday. But now they've got to resign those other jobs and come back in and help him. I heard that the bookies paid out many people. So that I'm not the only one, but as a man of God, I should have known the difference between God's voice, my voice, and the devil's voice. Hmm. God said in Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for the day that you eat you shall surely die. Devil said in Genesis 3, 4, the serpent, the devil said, you will not surely die. God said, and then Eve said, it was pleasant, it was desirable, and it would make her wise, so she ate. See, there's a my voice, God's voice, the devil's voice. I want to just speak a little bit, if I can, for a few minutes. Got a couple of minutes left on our feelings. We've got to break the myth. We've got to break the myth. See, God is emotional. He's an emotional... How many people know that? How many people have ever been told it's got nothing to do with feelings? It's got nothing to do with feelings. I want to tell you it's got everything to do with feelings. See, God is love. Is that an emotion? God is joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You've got to be able to see with clarity what God wants you to see. And we've got to break some myths. You see, my son rang me up the other day and said, Dad, Neil, Dad, we're going to take you to the state of origin. Now, I don't think for one minute I'm going to be the only person standing on the seat shouting. And I'm not going to be the only person sitting in the seat not shouting. Because you see, we get involved. You see, I believe, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to rub up a few hairs the wrong way here. Is that okay? No. Speak nice. I've only got a couple of minutes and I'm out of here. <laughs> That's why 
I don't want you just sitting in church saying to me, we're listening to you. Because that's a heap of garbage. If something's touching your spirit, you need to shout. You need to get excited. <laughs> you, <laughs> you need to stir yourselves a bit. I don't, <laughs> I'm not saying this so that, oh yeah, every time, oh hallelujah, praise God. No, no. This, but because when, look, I tell you what, let, let me say it this way, and I'm going to talk a, totally natural. If I'm at the football team, at, at the football game, and, and, and I'm the only person sitting when the Queensland <laughs> goes over there, I'm looking at the keyboard, a blue supporter over there. When 25 <laughs> nil. And if I'm the only person sitting there, Guess what? I am not going to really enjoy the game. Can you catch what my drift here? I'm not really going to be enjoying it. I can say, I'm watching. <laughs> I'm listening. No, 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 no. But if I, if I jump, yay, glory to God, amen. No, one say that. <laughs> Go, 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 go. <laughs> Queenslander. Hoo, 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 hoo. I get my emotions involved as well. <laughs> Come on, this Presbyterian church can do better than that. <laughs> Come on. Because you see, I, I went to preach in America, and it was an African-American church, and they had the, the, the seating around there, and there was this big square in the middle, and, and no pulpit, nothing else, and you're just in the middle there preaching. And, and I started to preach, and, and I started to talk, you know, stuff that you talk about, and next minute, they would jump onto their feet, with, before I finished preaching, the, the, the congregation was three feet from me. We were all out the front. <laughs> and I hadn't even finished preaching. I don't know how to explain it, but you, you get excited, amen. And, and you, yay, shakaranda bush shukabundi. Everybody, does somebody speak in tongues and do something, glory to God. We were so quiet in this place this morning. When you started to do that, I jumped two feet in the air. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Anybody catch my drift here? I just don't want you shouting for shouting's sake. But I want you to get your whole being, whole person, your emotions and everything involved and, and so that we can have a shunder a Monday and have a good time, amen. And it's not just to get accolades or not just to do this or do that. Get you down. Know, beg your pardon, Millie. I can't hear you, Millie. This place is too noisy. <laughs> oh, somebody give Millie a smack for me. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Our emotions are, you get involved. We, Quit while you're ahead, Neil. <laughs> I don't know whether that was God's voice, the devil's voice, or my voice. <laughs> oh, can I just say this? I love the Lord. All I want is you, Lord. 
All I want is you, Lord. Amen. Why don't we just stand to our feet? All I need is you, Lord. All I want is you, Lord. Father, we want to see the fire of God. We want to see the hand of God. Fire of worship come into our place. We're going to build ourselves by speaking what God says about us. I've got some foundational scriptures that I lean on and glean from that God is building His church and He's building you and me. He wants to touch us. I want you to, for, for a few seconds, just to think about God, your relationship with Him. Just allowing God just to come around your life. What do I need to do, Lord? I, I believe that God wants to set us free. When France was liberated, they, they danced in the streets. When the church is liberated, it will dance in the streets. It'll dance like David danced. It'll shout the shouts of praises like the armies of God that went out into victory. When they pursued the enemy, they took back what was stolen. And Lord, there's a time now I believe that the church of the living God has got to take back what the enemy has stolen. He's stolen our emotional response to you. Stolen so much that you want to restore. Right now in this house, it's all about God, it's all about you. If you're here in this place today and you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, open up your heart. Open up your heart and let Him come in. If today, even as a believer, if you know that the flesh, negativity, failure, defeat, brokenness, hurt, disappointments have got around your life and gets inside you. I've heard of Christians that haven't spoken to a brother or a sister, blood brother, blood sister, for 30 odd years because of something that they did way back there. If you talk to them about it, they say, I can't remember what it really was. I just know that we're not talking. Things separate, break strongholds, connections. It's a good time to let God have it. Let the Word of God just penetrate. Penetrate your heart today. God, I'm not here for this or that, I'm here for you. I'm not here for any other reason. I'm not on this planet for any other reason. I'm here for you. If you don't know Jesus today, you want Him to come into your life. You want Him to come in to your life. The door can be opened today. By you just saying yes. If that's you today, would you just quickly slip up your hand? Not to kneel, but just to the Lord. That's me today. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want Him to forgive me. I want Him to touch me. Would you just quickly slip it up today? You've never done it before and you want to do it now or if you have done it before but you know that you're not right with God and you want to do that today quickly just slip it up Holy oh, Jesus Father God 
Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let the wind of your Spirit just blow over us and touch us, Father. We're yours. Rededicate my life to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Lord. I give you my life. We're just going to open this altar this morning if there's people here today and you just might have a need for God to touch your life. Might be something there that you need God just to put his hand on. Whatever it might be, you might need a healing in your body. You might need it just to touch to help you through. We're going to sing that break my heart for what breaks yours. So if we can do that. I'm just going to open it up. As You're a spirit person, friend. Spirit's got to respond to God. Spirit will res- got to respond, not to the flesh, but to God. You just feel free to come as we sing this song this morning.